Let's talk about thiazolidine dions and how they work, plus some pharmacology. Here's everything we'll talk about, timestamps down below, and a short quiz at the end. So to first understand thiazolidine dions, we need to do a quick overview. So essentially, in this class of drugs, we only have two medications, pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. And we'll dive into the details of each later. Where this drug class gets its name is from this structure right here, this ring. This is a thiazolidine ring. These are oral medications. And that's important because these medications help us treat type 2 diabetes. And anytime you talk about diabetes, you want to know what's oral and what's injectable. And the whole goal of type 2 diabetes medication management is to lower blood glucose levels. And a key thing to note before we dive in is it only works in type 2 diabetics. You don't use this in type 1, and we'll dig into why. Now that we have a quick overview understanding of these medications, let's talk about how they actually work. We said they work for type 2 diabetic patients, and we need to understand how glucose and insulin interact in our body, so then we could see how these TCDs actually help in our type 2 diabetic patients. So anytime you have glucose absorption, either through food or creation of glucose through your liver, you'll have more and more glucose in your bloodstream. And then we're going to look for insulin that's being pumped out by our pancreas to be coupled together to be able to enter our tissues and cells. This is what gives our cells energy so that they could work properly. So type 2 diabetic patients have an issue where there is so much glucose in their blood that over time, the tissues have a resistance to insulin. That's very important to know. Type 2 diabetes is when the tissues and cells have a resistance to insulin. So when there is a resistance, there's only two things you can do. You can either increase the insulin to overcome the resistance, or you could make your tissues more sensitive. That's very important to understand as we go through the mechanism of action of our TZDs. And then real quick, briefly, type 1 diabetes is a completely different pathologic pathway. Here we see the pancreas being damaged, typically from an autoimmune disease, and the pancreas is not pumping out insulin, which is a completely different issue than type 2 diabetes. Let's say our patient takes pioglitazone, which is one of our TZD medications. What happens is the pioglitazone is an actual receptor activator, meaning it activates our PPAR gamma nuclear receptors. And this is a DNA modulator. So essentially, these medications alter a little bit of this DNA strand. And what that does is it helps upregulate some genes that are associated with metabolism. Now you have that upregulation of metabolic activity, which in turn is increasing our cells' insulin sensitivity. Our cells are becoming more and more sensitive to insulin. And what did we say type 2 diabetes patients need? Well, they need a way to make our cells more and more receptive to glucose because they have an insulin resistance. So now we have our TZDs that are lowering that insulin resistance and allowing glucose to enter the cells. Long story short, TZDs work at the DNA level to make our cells more sensitive to insulin. Now that we understand how TZDs work, when do we use them? Well, we talked about this. We said they only work in our type 2 diabetic population. Again, it does not work in type 1, only type 2 because of that insulin resistance issue. It is not a first-line agent. Again, that's reserved for metformin, which we talked in our previous video. And this is typically more of an add-on agent. Interesting enough, pioglitazone can be used for steatohepatitis, also known as fatty liver. This is an off-label indication. And remember, your liver is a big part of metabolizing or breaking down products in your body. And it makes sense that 
this could help upregulate the metabolism process for all these other functions. But this is off-label. This is not something you should focus on. 90% of the time, it's going to be used for type 2 diabetic patients. Now that we know when to use our TZDs, let's talk about some of the dosing and the adjustment. So our thiazolidine dions, we had two. We had pioglitazone, brand name Actos, and then we have rosiglitazone, brand name Avandia. Pioglitazone, super easy dosing. It's anywhere from 15 milligrams to 45 milligrams by mouth daily. Rosiglitazone, a little bit more complicated. It could go from four milligrams to eight milligrams by mouth in either one or two divided doses. This is where it gets a little interesting. Pioglitazone also activates something called PPAR alpha. Originally, we said both of these medications activate PPAR gamma. Well, pioglitazone has a secondary activation of PPAR alpha. And why that's unique and special is because it causes a very favorable effect on your cholesterol levels when you take it, meaning it'll lower triglyceride levels and increase your HDL. Now, there's a whole topic on lipid panels, HDL, LDL, all that stuff. Having too much or too little of either could be bad, but overall, it gives a favorable profile for your lipid levels. Whereas rosiglitazone only activates the PPAR gamma, and because of that, it actually worsens your LDL cholesterol. Again, LDL, it's not a horrible cholesterol. Everything's good in moderation, but overall, it'll increase the level too much where you may see some cardiovascular side effects. Now we could talk about some of the side effects of our TZDs. Admittedly enough, they're not super popular drugs, and it's because they have a pretty rough side effect profile. So getting into it, the first thing is we see edema in our patients. The reason is there are PPAR gamma receptors on our kidney, and when they're activated, it causes sodium retention. Again, water follows sodium, so you're going to have more and more of this edema buildup. Because of that, we can also see exacerbation in our heart failure patients. When you have a heart failure patient, they're having a difficult time pumping out blood. And when there's too much edema or too much fluid buildup, it makes it even harder to pump out blood. So it makes sense that it could exacerbate heart failure. And this is a boxed warning on both of them. And it's right on the box that do not give this if a patient has severe heart failure. The third thing, because of the edema, you could also see weight gain in patients. Sometimes it's because of the fluid fill. Sometimes it's because of the actual adipose tissue increasing. We can also see osteoporosis in some patients after they've been taking this medication for a long time. And then we have some more rare side effects. The first one being hepatotoxicity. This is a very rare side effect. It's not seen too often. And then there's also a risk of bladder cancer. Again, this is a very rare side effect. You don't see it too often. And then the last thing I really want to talk about is MI, so a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. This is actually a boxed warning only for rosiglitazone. Remember, we said that rosiglitazone can increase your LDL, which can have cardiovascular side effects like a heart attack. So it makes sense that rosiglitazone has this boxed warning for an MI potential. All right, we made it to the end. Let's do a quick summary of everything we learned. We talked about our thiazolidinediones or TZDs. We said they only work in our type two diabetic patients because they have an insulin resistance issue. These are oral agents that we use to treat our type two diabetic population. And the way they work is by binding at that DNA receptor level at the PPAR gamma receptor activator, causing an increase in gene expression of metabolism, which in turn increases insulin sensitivity. And again, that's what we want to treat because our type 2 diabetes patients need to lower their insulin sensitivity. In this class, we had two medications. 
we had rosiglitazone and pioglitazone. We're going to put a star next to pioglitazone because it had that additional benefit of a favorable lipid profile. And both these drugs, the whole purpose of these drugs were to decrease our blood glucose levels in our diabetic patients. And then we talked about the side effects. We said how they could cause edema. It could exacerbate heart failure patients to have a heart failure episode. They could increase weight gain. We see some osteoporosis. Very rarely we see hepatic toxicity. We saw bladder cancer. And then for rosiglitazone, there's another boxed warning for MI risk. So that's everything. Let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. What is the boxed warning for both pioglitazone and rosiglitazone? What is the mechanism of action of rosiglitazone? Which indication is rosiglitazone indicated for? How do TZDs help regulate glucose levels?